suns are the seeds of creation. The Creator scatters His seeds of light throughout all space to father and mother all borning image forms of His imagining. In the still centers of sun is all idea foreborning into the images of God's imagining. But in the oneness of the light of suns they are without form and void. All seeds are without form and void even though the pattern of all idea is in them. The oneness of incandescent suns must be divided and extended to cooling earths before the ideas of the mineral, vegetable, and animal kingdoms can sequentially unfold to prepare the way for man's unfolding from his seed in the sun. All expressions of idea of earth is likewise in the sun and must be extended to earth for manifestation. Mountains and oceans are in the sun, but also all things else. The cry and sound of a newborn babe, the roar of an avalanche, are the street noises of a city. All of these are light, and such expressions of the light are possible only through division and extension of the one light into the two which manifest the one. Millions of years ago, this planet became sufficiently far from the sun for the water ideal to be expressed as pairs of opposites, and organic life appeared upon the earth in lowly forms. These forms gradually complexed until the man ideal began to be expressed, not by a germ, but by the polarization of light itself as manifested in the interchanging heartbeat of the father-mother light of the universe. The ideal of all things is omnipresent in the one still light. The expression of all ideal is extended to the two lights of white suns and black space surrounding suns which manifest the Creator's two desires. Desire for expression is manifested by the electric action-reaction sequences of interchange between the two opposing white and black lights of sun and space. It is this interchange which polarizes the still seed of ideal into unfolding form of that ideal. To polarize means to divide stillness into opposing pulsing extensions. It is like extending a lever from a fixed fulcrum and setting it in motion to express the ideal which is in the still fulcrum. In this manner, the womb of Mother Earth becomes impregnated with the seed of the man ideal extended from the sun, and the first cell of man unfolds from Mother Earth into the heavens toward the refolding light of the Father. The fir this first pulsation of the Mother Light, which is born in God's ideal into pattern form, is the black light negative half of its pulsation cycle. The unfolding mother light which reaches out into the heavens is the black light of expansion. Black light is the negative pattern of the positive ideal of light as expressed by incandescence. In other words, black light is expanded or unfolded white light. Conversely, white incandescent light is contracted or refolded black light. This is nature's method of giving formed bodies to formless ideal. The positive father light refolds the unfolding negative mother light in cyclic wave pulsations, which man calls growth. But growth is but a moving picture of sequential patterns of unfolding ideal projecting upon the imagined three-dimensional screen of time and space. This is the Creator's method of electrically recording His one whole ideal in many electrically sensed multi-pattern body forms of matter. Life and Death of Bodies To understand the meaning of life and death, we must know more of nature's processes especially those concerning our body and the spirit within which motivates the body and forever records our constantly changing individuality. We must know the basis of our individuality 
and the reason for its constant changing. In order to understand what happens after death, we must become more fully aware of nature's process which gives us bodies and takes them away to re-give new bodies to fulfill nature's law of repetition. Man's electrically sensed body is not the immortal man which his body manifests. His body is not the individual to which he attributes his life and being. His body is composed of a few chemical elements borrowed from earth and sun to fashion into an instrument for his use. When his body disappears, the individual which inhabited that body is not dead. Everybody emerges from a formless state into a formed one in repeated cycles of appearance, disappearance, and reappearance. All creating things are formless as ideal at their source. They then unfold into formed ideal through desire to unfold. This process of emergence from a formless state and a return to that state has been going on within man's body since its beginning. All bodies of all creating things are forever turning inside out and outside in during their entire cycles. During a small part of the cycle, bodies are within the range of human sensing, but during the greater part of the cycle, they are beyond that range. At no time during the entire cycle, are created things without bodies, are patterned records of bodies, from which new bodies will again spring true to their patterned records. Each in-breathing, out-breathing cycle is unfolding the form of a new body from an already existent patterned record. The constant refolding process, which man calls death, is recorded as it refolds for repetition in his next life cycle. Nature records every action and desire of the body, likewise every conscious desire and thought of the soul in those cosmic elements which are called the inert gases, helium, neon, krypton, argon, and others. These common elements which will not unite with the physical elements are the basis of God's recording system by means of which every thought and action of ever creating thing is stored in them as seed extensions from sun and earth centers for repetition until their purposes are fulfilled. Everything in nature is purposeful and nothing in nature fulfills its purpose in one life cycle. Nature multiplies the time dimension of her light waves so that pattern records of forms which have expanded beyond man's range of sensing can come within that range, then divides those time dimensions until they again disappear into the other half of their cycle beyond man's range of sensing. Man's individuality. Man's greatest difficulty in comprehending what happens after he disappears in death is due to lack of comprehension of his immortality, which never disappears. His visible body would be useless if it were not centered by his invisible, immortal self, soul, or person. Man is aware of himself as an individual, but his concept of what constitutes his individuality is vague. His individuality is what he unknowingly interprets his immortal self to be. His self or soul never changes, never appears or disappears, but his individuality constantly changes to forever fit the changing concept of what he interprets his immortal self to be. As every man gradually comes to know the light of his self in him, his individuality changes by the constant uplift toward that increasing awareness of his centering omnipotence.